What's up guys? We're headed out tomorrow on the Broad Minded behind us here. And this is a uh, part of the fleet from uh, Captain Nick Stanzik. And what are we gonna do tomorrow? Well, <laughs> we're gonna go sword fishing. I think I think first thing. I don't, we don't know 100% the game plan. Actually our good friend Dan Meese is the one that arranged this and put this together for us. Thank you, Dan. No, no, no. Perfect world. So this Perfect is what's going to happen. Yeah. This we're going to go out. This is to happen. We're going to go out. We're going to drop a swordfish bait. We're going to get bit. First drop. Right away. We're going to slap a 200 pound swordfish on the deck right. in the first 30 minutes. No <laughs> no long time, you know, <laughs> world record fighting. <laughs> we're going to slap the fish on the deck and then we're going to go out for grouper, <laughs> deep water grouper. Yeah. We're gonna limit out on those. Right. We're gonna get a few barrel fish, right. and then come back in. A little queen snapper. Queen mahi, snap, ma a few mahi, that's yeah, right. The mahi, yeah. the half hour with the sword. Eddie will be you know, stick baiting those. We'll work, Dan will be on the sword, flop that in. Sword, mahi, queen, grouper, the black like barrel maybe. fish. <laughs> Guys, so we'll see you tomorrow morning yeah. at this boat, right. and we're gonna see what really happens. What really happens. You guys decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. And uh, we got big plans for today. We're gonna try and see if we can not drop for some swordfish, and then we're gonna um, possibly do some deep dropping for some uh, groupers, snappers. We'll see what happens. Uh, depends on our speed over ground. But uh, we're out here with uh, Dan. Hey, how's it going? We got Eddie. What's up, guys? Christopher Doyle. That's our captain, Mike, right there. What's going on? We got Mr. Lee right over there, and Dane. So this is the crew for today. And, uh, we're pretty pumped to be out here on this uh, Freeman 42 foot. Freeman, amazing ride. Like you're waiting for this boat to uh, skip and like smack the water. Like, and it, it just never happens. It just kind of rolls with the waves. It's incredible. I've never been so comfortable riding out in seas this uh, high, so. So as we're running out to the sore grounds, we keep uh, stopping periodically and you can see uh, Captain Mike's up there in the tuna tower and uh, we've got a few uh, spinners that are rigged up with this squid and just a long shank J hook and uh, Lee's been just pitching back a, a ballyhoo and you know as we see birds diving and whatnot we're looking for uh, mahi. We've already uh, put one mahi on the boat but it looks like we're getting pretty close to the sore grounds. We're gonna pitch one more time see if we can't get these mahi. They were uh, jumping out of the water. We're in 1466 right now. We're deep. Put a water. Did we ever get that other one in the boat? Yeah. Where's you at? Oh, you, met, you did him up there? All right, Dan. Talk to me, bro. What's going on? Uh, tight line, baby. Yeah. Got a mahi, a little bit bigger guy. Yeah. Up the bowl. There we go. Nice. Hold that up, man. Let's look at it. Nice, Dan. Bullhead. We'll get see, set we up on the sword, guys. So we'll get set yeah. up with the sword as soon as we. Yeah, there we go. Nice, bro. That's with the mahi, guys, just let's do one run at a time, you know? It, it's so much easier. Oh, yeah. My job yeah. is to watch Lee with his scissors. Oh, you're going to film all my secrets. Yeah, huh? you see that? So, mm -hmm. you remember when the teacher oh, had you? cutting little snowflakes yeah. in school and you were like, this no is worries, never going to apply to life. And look at you now. Yeah, now I'm in home ec, learning right. how to sew. Yeah. 
Tenno VMC. Tenno VMC. Yeah. What's the light Super sharp. That you guys use? They laser sharp these things here. Oh wow. So like what I do is I just want to sit here. Kind of a rundown on this, so like, yeah, I got my wax and I don't put my leader on until after I sew my base to the hook. Okay, so like, I, like I said, I got my arms like 70 pounds on my wax gloss. It's a six inch mortician needle, I think. So, like, I'll take it. I like to put a rubber skirt over the top of these guys to make it a little more streamlined over okay. the tip of the bait. You know, what's it done? So, I like to go like an inch down and I measure my hook out, you don't ever want the bend of your hook up in your bait, that'll cause it to spin, you know, and obviously not very conducive to strike. Right. So I'll take that in the bottom, means that dolphin belly's always got a nice crease right down the middle, and that's your center point. So I'll shove that through all the way almost to the barb, and pull it out, and that's just a guideline to shove my hook through on the underside. Okay. Okay, I'll make sure I come out dead in the middle, see it's right in the middle of that yep. little crease there. And then we'll go to right there, you know, where obviously our, our bin's well out of the hook. Oh, it's perfect. We still got a little bit of room, you know, for our skirt to go over top there. Yep. And then I'll start here like this. I kind of like to lay the bait down. And I go right into the eye of the hook. And I oh, pull no. my wax floss all the way almost through. And I leave myself about three, four, four inch. And then you just tie one overhand knot. And you want to make sure your skin side kind of folds over that way. Okay. For obvious reasons. Yep. We don't really stitch the shank of the hook, just uh, you'll see how it goes. Okay, and then I'll go around to the other side like so. Come around this side of it. Okay. Back through the eye. Obviously you want to cinch everything down nice and tight before you start going on your knots. Yep. Do two overhands. Okay. And then all we're going to do from here is we're just going to close up the stomach cavity with, with the cross stitch. So you'll leave your tag to tie back up to once you come back up on your cross stitch. Okay. And sew that up. So I'll, put them, I'll put them about, you know, half that, an inch apart. That's like a portion of, of the, the belly. Yes, and, and then that is, go, that's the belly that down going into the tail a little bit. To almost where you come out on the end of it is like right before the tail. Okay, so we're just going about a half inch apart down, down, down a little bit from where your knife's edge took the skin, you know? Right. Down a little bit because you don't want to just be able to pull right through, you know? Sometimes your tag will get in your way a little bit. You just kind of want to make them make sure they're nice and in place before you get them down tight. Obviously, try to avoid stabbing yourself. That'll happen from time to time. <laughs> yeah, I'm not done it anymore. Yeah. And really, you just want to get that. The objective of this is just closing that stomach cavity up, you know? To make it streamlined. Yeah. That's it. You don't even have to go all the way down, really. No, you really don't. I'll go a little farther on this one. Like, you know, nothing spinning. You want it tight and streamlined. Yeah, and then everything from that point on is pretty. It's got the bone still in it, so it's pretty intact. There's really no reason. I might do one more down. And then we'll go. And then we'll just create a cross stitch. So we're gonna go basically back through the same holes. It's gonna look like a bunch of X's when, when we're down there. Sometimes I'll take my needle before I go to. I'm gonna cut that door just a little bit more. Even. Then I'll make a hole for my leader with my rigging needle. Yeah, yeah. Blowing the 
dark skirt sliding it on. Yeah, these things actually really glow too once they've got a little sunlight on them. Look at them in a dark room and they're like... They green say green. no light, no bite. Is that true? Uh, I don't know. Who about knows, that. right? Oh, I know. I have... I have on days where they were biting, sent it down with no lights and gotten bit, yeah. Uh, so then we're just gonna... Oh, okay, slide it over the curb. Get that, you know, that's why you leave, you go down, you yep. go down a little bit, you know, when you when you stitch your, your hook to your bait, that way you got a little, little pocket of meat for that, to fill that skirt out, make it as hydrodynamic as possible. Right. And then I'll take my excess wax, I'll go through the side, obviously trying to get through the skin of that little chunk of meat that I pushed to the head too. Right. Push it all the way through there. Okay. And I'll just cut my needle right behind the eye of it there. And you can just do an overhand knot like that. And then pull on your two ends, nice and tight. And that's your island rod and dolphin belly. You know, you see how the rods bomb and caught so hundreds and hundreds of swordfish on that bait right there. That's awesome. Man, that's a whole YouTube video by itself. Yeah. Right there. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm used to it, you know. Stan's fam. Yeah, yeah we do that's a lot awesome, of that. bro. So we're out here uh, pushing 1,500 feet, and we're going to start with just dropping one down line. And once we're set and we're kind of in an area that has a steep drop off on the other side so um, we're gonna forego a buoy line uh, to start and then we'll see how this progresses so one sword baits going straight down about 1400 feet and uh, we'll see what happens we cannot be tight reason being is that captain mike's eating his sandwich right now so yeah, it doesn't make sense eat, i got interrupted uh, let me get the bite just put in full speed and pop them off so you can finish your sandwich. Yeah, we're, good. <laughs> we're hooked up, guys. We are hooked up. Man, we called it too. We were like, this is the drop. This is the drop. So the last one that we were on um, actually ended up being that we were we were tangled up in uh, probably some, some tackle that was left on the bottom of the ocean floor. But uh, I believe we are tight. So cool. Stay tuned, guys. Let's see if we can catch a swordfish. But uh, basically, what Captain Mike just told me was, once that lead gets up, I'm gonna I'm gonna back down the drag on this reel. Um, Lee's gonna unhook the weight, and then my job is stay tight to this fish. I gotta stay tight to this fish without pulling the hook on him as well. So I can't. I don't want to overdo it. But uh, you'll notice as soon as I unclip the lead and let go. Yeah. It's gonna be slack, like 90% of the time. And you just down. hammer down on it. 90% of the time, because they're up out here somewhere. Yeah, hammer it, but the drag's tight, back off. As soon as the rod bends over, you're gonna slow it back down. Be, be prepared too, guys. A lot of times, once we get the lead off, if it comes close, they, 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 slow swim. Down. they okay. try to swim straight into the motors, like 90% of the time. They come charging at the props, and you have to literally go spin. into a turn and literally yeah. spin. How do you feel right now, Dan? I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. First time swording. <laughs> It's we're ready for a fight. It's a long wait and then a blast of excitement. That's right. Okay. Yeah, basically, just don't mess up. <laughs> mess up. No pressure. No you. pressure. Everybody's looking at you. It's all, <laughs> it's all good. It's all on you, John. I, I feel pressure. And yeah, go to like just under, just under the four, right? Right okay. when I get my hand on the line. Okay. okay. What are we at? Two ninety-seven. So. You tell me when, and I'll. I'll and yeah. Do I need to swing this to you? I'll. I'll just grab yeah, it right here. Okay. You just stay on the. I got you. Stay on the dock. Yep. And I'm going right in between the three and the four. Too. Don't hold that rod. Let it swivel in the rod. Holder. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. That's one thing. A lot of people try to hold tip. it, you know, and then the rod is. The is tip will fall or angle differently, and it won't. You know, okay. It rubs against the guy. Go right in between the three and the four, baby. Yeah. Don't go too low. On tell me when. Go ahead and back your drag off now. All right, I'm at three and a half, gentlemen. Right at three and a half. Right. I'm ready to put the juice. Go, 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 go. Look out, look out. Well, jump out there. Hey, check his drag, Lee. He might need to come up a little. I'm, yep, I'm at a stalemate with him. Oh, it's fine, everybody's fine. Slow your reel down a little. 
there, there he is. is. There he is. Hey. I see color. Slow it down a little. Slow it down. Slowing it down. The nice. That's nice. He's feeling lying on, on me. Him, so make sure to stay tight. Speed up. Yeah. Go fast. Your job is just to stay tight, brother. I'm staying tight. I'm go, go fast. We got him, guys. We got him. I'm on the reel. Woo! Way to go, Johnny! Hey, hang on. On the deck. You want to try to never let one of these build, one of these things be in between your legs either, no matter how dead you think it is. Yeah. You want to step over a dead sword fish and don't make sure you step. On the hook, you catch the fish. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a video and just make fun uh, of ourselves. No, 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 dude. I think it's get cool. The, I was really hoping to see camera. you guys catch yeah. some fish on that. Trust me. Like, yep. I just know it with the fish. It's just a little bit much. Tell Nick if he wants some content, right? Boy, you know, Nick would have loved to have been here and yeah. seen this stuff today. Well, maybe on a He's, better day. It's very interesting. Suggest that it might be a good, and we'll come down and fish with them. Yeah. Compensate accordingly, whatever, but, yeah, 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 yeah. But if he wants to do a video, you know, we'll on. talk to him about it for sure. I know he's he's definitely he, he's just he like the other he's, he's into anything that's you know different new stuff. What do you, what do you think here, Daniel? <laughs> I think we got another big fish on. <laughs> uh, it's weird. It shouldn't have been floating. It's something else. Come here, Chris. The current was just ripping today, and we couldn't Slow stay completely vertical with the jigs. It was very difficult. Yeah, you see him thumping? You see him thumping? We're good. So we switched over to bait. It's packed off, you know? All right, let's see what we got, folks. Drop down some squid on the chicken rig. How come it's not called a squid rig? Oh, oh, chicken rig. I've never caught a chicken on a chicken rig. I think it's maybe because a chicken can catch a fish on one. Yeah. Even a chicken can catch a fish on one. Is that okay there? That's, that's very good. That's good. Well, you need to get some good stands. Yeah. Uh, hey, Stan. Nick Stanzik. Come jigging with us. Florida. Big snow. Whoa, again. look at that. Big snow. Nice. Two of them. Really nice snowy, man. Oh, Comes to Papa. Look at that belly on him. Really nice snowy grouper, man. Wow, dude. Yeah. Nice snowy grouper off the bottom with the BMC circle hook right there on the uh, chicken rig. But, uh, that's a, I mean, he's gotta be 20 pounds, but this is actually a really nice snowy grouper. We were having trouble sticking bottom with the jigs today. You know, we love jigging and uh, you know what? Sometimes bait just gets the job done. And I always say, you know, the guys that can do both are gonna catch more fish and that, and it's true. It's the truth, you know, and before I uh, jigged almost all the time you know this is what i did i dropped bait and uh hold that fish up a little more at the end of the day 
I like to catch fish, and that's what we did. So that's it, guys. You approve, Dan? I approve. Dan approves. I'm gonna go right behind the gill plate, go up there by the shoulder. Just go down just like anything else. Oh, yeah. oh a little plug line cut. Get on the other side real quick. So, uh, how many days a year do you put in sorting out here? Uh, on sorting, on? honestly? Yeah. Uh, last year or so, I mean. Probably a lot, and it's hard to put a number on it. I'd say at least 100, close to 150. 150. I figured it was a lot. So now, yeah. uh, well, how would you uh, summarize today? Well, I mean, you know, we didn't we didn't sword fish all day, and I feel like those fish just started biting, like yeah. right, you know, when we hooked our fish. Because as we were leaving, I don't know if you guys noticed or not. I was talking to my buddy on the radio. And uh, they had just lost one, and we were kind of reset right on the scene. The terrorizer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my buddy. Uh, he's out of marathon. But um, they 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 were hooked up to one right yeah. when we were pulling away. Oh, so wow. I'd assume you know if we'd have put some more time in, we probably. Yeah. But, but dude, Two I mean, sword day. They've been biting, and we've been we've been out there a lot, so we've been kind of we've been on them. We just that same drift we were making. Honestly, we're we uh, we've caught a lot of fish in the last few trips man and uh right there and I, just the, based on the fact that nobody was really getting bit in the morning and then all of a sudden you know oh, like a light boy. switch and that'll happen a lot of days out there sword fishing you know all of a sudden everybody will start getting bit at the same time you know and uh that's kind of what happened today i think i'm sure if we would have sat out there and drifted out you never know we could have hooked a big giant one or you know we could have hooked a couple and lost them it's just you you never know with sword fishing it's almost like being at the casino you know we could have tried to throw our jinx down yeah because this guy was uh 51 and a half inches i think yeah and i'm sure i know when he was when he was coming up i was i was watching you and listening to you i think there was a little skepticism that he that he would make the 47 cut yeah yeah no, no i knew i knew he was a keeper but um it just I didn't know if I wanted to even bother throwing the harpoon at him or not. Because this, is, this it's, size not a, is gaffable. Well, yeah, and it's it's just not a big target, you know. I missed right. a few times, so, but you know, like a, a 200 pounder man. I mean, yeah. I would have probably hit him on the first shot. But it's just not a big target, you know. Man, when we so we we have a lot of conversations, and, and some some guys are out there really really making an attempt at it. Obviously, nighttime when they're up higher can make the. Uh, the jig a little bit more realistic because getting it down oh, 1500 yeah. feet during the day with the currents just not yeah really definitely dude i would definitely be trying to do it at night too but sure. when, you, when we think of jigging a swordfish this is the size nice. we, we think of first yeah. you know dude i mean yeah i mean on that tackle i don't you'd be i can say you'd be limited but because you never know, but if you hook, to, you know, you could. I'm sure you could hook 150 to 200 pound fish on that gear, you guys. With the amount of pressure that I saw, that you were able to put yeah, on it when we, we got stuffed a couple times. Yeah, dude, I would say. I mean, it, you, you know, it'd be a battle, and you'd have to play play the fish out. Sure. What do you sure. think he weighed? Oh, 70 pounds. 60, That's 60, what I 65, said. 70 pounds. Yeah. So we're cutting up a 65, 70 pound swordfish we got today at about, uh, actually during lunch. And Dan called it. Dan said, let's break the sandwiches out because I always get a bite when I'm taking a bite. That's right. <laughs> and we broke the sandwiches out. Tell, tell us, what did you say, Dan? We got the bite. <laughs> as soon as we take a bite, we're going to get the bite. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And I, th I think I think there was like a moment that like, like we all got, kind of got pumped right there. Yeah, and we're like, sure. you know what? Well, it's going if it's gonna go down yeah it's going down right now right. and we, we, we basically fight, called it and we we're on like, the flight captain mike was was up on the rod with a yeah. mouthful of turkey blt <laughs> you know when, when it happened that's right he wasn't ready for he was gonna let him go because he was he was eating his sandwich Eat lunch yeah, let's see if this one put down the shoe oh, hang on here what's in the hey, stomach let's dissect what's in the stomach yeah let's dissect her first oh yeah let's see what's in there gross anatomy People love. Look, see, this is why. My goodness. This is why we like dropping little shit. Yeah. Look at it all. Those are sinnets, right? Sinnets. 
That's what it looks like to me. They're a little lancet fish. I think, yeah, that's a lancet. Lancet fish. Lots of them. Heavy, heavy lancet fish. Yeah, tons of them look. Oh, wow. And then he did have a squid. Yeah, he had a squid. But, I mean, more so than anything, lots of these little no, lancet right fish, there. which almost look like a sinnet. I don't know if you're familiar with a sinnet. It's like a relative of the barracuda. I mean, that's what Chris, grab look. a handful of that and let's get the tarp riled up over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about I just grab, like... Man, these poor senets were... First, they were swordfish chow. Wait, wait, wait do it again? Tarpon bait. First, they were swordfish chow. Now, they're going to be tarpon chow. Right, right, guys? Right, 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 right. Oh, it's a big one. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram, putting out a few TikToks there. And most importantly, jig on.